Yo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two of the regional qualifiers. You are watching the most stacked region of them all. It's Europe. Let me tell you, it's at least so far defying expectations. Because In a everyone... good way or a bad way? It depends on who, if you're a fan of Secret or not. Okay. If you're a fan of Secret, it's defying expectations in a bad way. Because they are not, this region is not as free as everyone was well, assuming. Three and one. Three and one. Right. Tied, tied with two other teams and losing to Planet Dog. And uh, do you know how many times today I've heard people say, well, who is Planet Dog? Much as how in CIS I hear a lot of people being like, who is M19? You can't sure. sleep on these teams. All right. Well, here's the thing, right? In this region, two teams make it through, and it's all best of threes, you know? Yeah. Right? I think Team Secret is one of those teams that will do better in those situations. So even though I'm not a Team Secret fanboy, I'm not worried about Team Secret at all. But why are we talking about Team Secret right now? Because this is the only thing that people seem to care about in EU, and I'm here to campaign for the other teams inside this all right, region. Tell me about Penta Sports and Team Singularity since you are... An by expert? the way, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. I am Luminous. Oh yes. But I don't matter. What you should listen to is my co-caster, Tsunami, because you're the reason why we're casting this game. True, true. Let's go, Tsunami. Give me the give me the numbers. Alright, so I'd seen a handful of Penta yesterday. And yep. coming into the qualifiers, a lot of people were like, okay, Penta, Danish Bears are most likely the two serious contenders against Secret's likely throne. They are two and two right now. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people also said that Crescendo would be the strong second place finish, uh, standing, and they are. Crescendo. Okay. No, tell me, tell me the score. I can see you looking at it right now. Crescendo is one and four. Okay, so what we can see here is that you shouldn't listen to what people tell you. Exactly. You shouldn't even listen to what I'm telling you. But what I can at least hope to impart amongst the people is that they beat Alliance yesterday. Exactly. What does that mean? I mean, it was uh, Singularity, you mean? Oh, sorry, Penta. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it was, uh, it's more hotly contested than people are giving it credit for. Now, Singularity, I have not seen too much of, specifically in the EU qualifier. They are a pretty consistent team in terms of always showing up to, like, random European qualifiers and stuff like that, but have not really made it to a land showing quite yet. Let yeah. me tell you about Singularity. Okay. I got to cast a game yesterday. Let's uh, hear it. Their mid player, Nisha, went off. Right? On? On Dragon Knight, which is not a hero How that do you go off on Dragon exactly, Knight? Exactly, right? What? Uh, had a 2 1 2 build. Okay. On, on Dragon Knight. What was his match? Against a puck. Remember? Against a puck. Like I was killing you the puck. You go off as a DK against, against a, a puck. puck. Actually, it's, it's a, to me, it's a, actually a very decent match. Did he go blink? Um, yes, he did. Okay. Okay. And his uh, his 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 item build was even crazier. He went hood first into an armlet into a blink. Wow. Into a lotus orb. Okay. That was one of those things that you you post on Reddit and be like, post the items and, and guess the hero. You know, like that's 10k MMR professional TI qualifier game. Guess the hero. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I guess I got to say, welcome to EU now, Southeast Asia. Has been known for wacky, wild Kool-Aid style item builds. I saw a Drow Ranger first item pipe yesterday, <laughs> and guess what? She won. She won in under 30 minutes. Yeah. So sure. times are changing. World, changing. The world is becoming a smaller place. Southeast Asia is the is the region that everyone wants to see the most, and Europe just doesn't seem to be getting any respect. And I just I can't mean, I want I want to be casting C right now. You just did, and I want to be casting more C. Tell me, th this is this is gonna change your mind. I guarantee it. We okay. got exotic picks here. How much? How much tree and protector have you been seeing recently? Hero sucks. Yes, he's not great right now. <laughs> Situationally. By though, the way, I might seem like I give no f about this game, but I actually am uh, curious in terms of what tree is gonna bring. Cause normally in this this hero has been completely ignored by other regions. Also, I want to see how Penta Esports is gonna run a draw strategy. Cause to me. Being able to run a good draw lineup is a good indication of the skill level of your team. Because it's a very timing-based strategy. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong. Your, your damage control needs to be quite good. So Yeah, there, there's a lot of organization and coordination that's required for a draw ranger stats, which is why you oftentimes may see it in pubs that like some person will pick draw ranger and then like three other heroes are like, oh, dude, I'm going to pick a ranged hero also. 
but then no one helps the drow, and it all falls to pieces. Yep. So I have faith that Penta is going to be able to pull it off because I've been seeing a handful of drow strategies in this region. And I mean, you can, you can, we can keep up the good cop, bad cop routine because usually I'm bad cop. And so Are you? I am definitely usually a bad cop. All right, I'm the good cop. No. That sucks if I'm the good cop. Yeah, but this game it can be different. Okay. Meanwhile, we have also Slardar, which uh Oh, that's a good good anti drow hero if it you ask me. It definitely is. PA Slark. Slark actually wasn't banned out, so I'm surprised it didn't go for Slark, but I like PA more, don't you think? Uh what for? I mean, against get a in there, dude. Against a Queen of Pain, I feel like PA is just going to get blown up and she can't cash Quap to save her life. Okay. I can see that. I mean, you could blink in and kill Quap too. If yeah. Blink and kill everything. You I mean, were describing the hero to me. Yeah. You blink in and kill people. No, no, no. I'm saying that, that yes, you are describing Phantom Assassin to me. I'm familiar with how the yes. hero works. I, very intricate <laughs> hero. I, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, if someone can pop off on DK, and if this is a mid PA. No, which this is, is a mid puck. Calm down. You never know, though. I know. Yeah, it's going to be a mid puck. But. I am curious if she's going to be able to stay survive uh, survive things because her team is great at catch. Puck excellent with Dream Coil, Silence, Slardar. Most likely is going to get more farm than usual. More often than not, we see Sand King in this role, but Sand King was banned out, and Slardar has kind of fallen off in favor of Sand King. But he still has a very strong place in the game, just the fact that like you don't have to go boots first because he has sprint. You just need to hit that early level two, and you can bully even a Drow Ranger because she doesn't want to have to take Gust early. Yeah, I don't really like this Enigma final pick. Um, normally, the strength of Enigma, especially in an offlane position, which I assume this is going to be offlane, is the fact that there eventually there is going to be a time where you could just like black hole without any fear, but that never will be the case because overgrowth will go through BKB. If you get Lincoln to protect your over, uh, well, Lincoln's won't protect you from overgrowth either. So yeah, uh, it's it ain't gonna be good. Also, uh, the advantage of having Nick in the off lane is you get to like deny creeps, pull it back. PA is one of those cores that if he sees you under the tower, she has no care in the world to dive you by you know daggering you slowing you down especially when you don't have any magic damage with enigma it does not really. right so I, I think enigma is gonna need a little bit help why is my mouse not locked into dota 2 can we fix that mm, i don't know edge pan will that fix it nope how can i cast dota if my mouse is not locked into dota 2 i don't know Everyone expects pretty poor camera work from you regardless, so this is just going right. to be par for the course. Alright. Exclusively full screen. If Fine. this ruins everything... Oh. No. Let's move, Let's move back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to break stuff, you know? It's borderless window. Are you not a mouse 3 kind of guy? How do I cast? Use mouse three. What's mouse three? Hold this? down. Yeah. Yeah, I do do that, but you know, sometimes when I'm scrolling with. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man. You're just gonna have to adapt on the fly. All right, that's what I do best. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this offlane enigma, he went boots first, which means that he's definitely not planning on going back into the jungle at any point. So he's pretty confident that this offlane is gonna go well. Which I'm like you, I'm skeptical about. <laughs> well, he is. He's going to place this. Let me tell you that. Yeah, he's taking a world tour. Yeah. Which might make the enemy team think that he's laid down a couple of wards. What a what a clever trap. This is a ballsy trap. But by the way, this is the ward that you want if you're laning against Enigma because he will inevitably deny creeps. He will be under his tower, and this gives you full vision to do any wrap around without you know support backup and stuff like that. So Yeah, and Enigma is very susceptible to those kinds of rotations, especially yeah. with the heroes that Singularity have. These are all heroes that can pretty easily dive aside from the Disruptor, and then if you slap some living armor on that, yes, in theory, it'll get burned off by Eidolon right clicks, but if they're not near Enigma, then he's just toast. Cat's core? Playing on the Enigma, or sorry, on, on the Shireen Protector. I think he's going to go for the standard build, the 3 one, one so picking up the Living Armor at 4. We might not even see Living Armor for a good majority of this early game. It depends on how aggressive Singularity want to play it. 
because it doesn't have to be just defensive usages of the living armor. If you have the tower dial living exactly, armor, exactly. Yeah. PA is ju uh, just super eager for that. I mean, I, I think the eidolons would break it pretty fast, but we'll see. Although in this game it may be for defensive purposes, I've seen DNZ play a handful. Is of DNZ games. trapped? No, he slipped is his he way dead? through. He is a he's fine. He's dead. I don't. Oh! Orb Range creep. Orb of venom. Orb of Range. venom. Yo, Yo that that Nyx regen though. Oh my God, Cat's core. They popped the dust on him. Okay. He's Jap's, on the run. Jap's gotta be careful. Well, oh no, he's Baze, done. Yeah, he's done. Oh, what a turnaround. TNZ ate that tango. Baited. That's a second kill. No, it's there's not. No, there's no cask anymore. Oh, oh. yes, there is. Oh, the right click. Oh, right click. South. That's economic damage. That's a lot more than economic damage if you get a double kill on Drow Ranger at one minute into the game. And a Sal. That's Let me tell you, this um, Drow is not buying a pipe this game. Emotion <laughs> it's emotional, physical, economical, every type of damage that you could dream of. At least they didn't get miss too much experience. But Drow is already level 2. Yeah. And Let me tell you, Drow also got some experience. Yeah, so... I imagine that Trium Protector is probably going to have to stick around here for a while. A lot of times a Trium Protector, he gets those... You know, maybe like level two, put it into Leech Seed and start roaming around. You can't leave Slaughter to his own devices right now. And if anything, Penta's supports are going to have a lot more free time now. Yep. Denied. All right, back in the mid lane. Uh, this used to be one of the most skill-intensive matchup in the in the game, the Puck versus the Quad. But ever since Puck got that uh, six damage, it's really just the Puck advantage lane. You mean Quad advantage lane? No, I meant Puck advantage lane. Oh, oh the six damage buff, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, it's, uh, you still have that, you know, hidden meta of, like, disjoining Shadow Strike with the phase shift and all that business, but it's a lot harder. For it, uh, and when it comes to equal skill, the puck will generally come out on top. Yes. But if you have a superior mid laner Quap, she can sometimes win the lane. Again, Nisha popped off on DK yesterday. Yeah, but I saw Blazemon do some work, too. I mean, all, all mids in this region are pretty respectable, so... We'll see. I think it'll probably come down to support rotations and other things, which now... Are there any 10k mids in this region? N there are not. Okay. You are absolutely correct about that. Got oh, why, were you about to give credit to SEA? Because I believe I believe a North American player got 10k? Because <laughs> that's what I heard. Oh, well, the, the North American player definitely got help from his <laughs> North American teammates to get 10k. Trim. I'm talking about all the training that they did together. Oh, one of course. One practice. Of course, yeah. Trim Protector, waiting. Might be able to get this courier. Can root it. Punch. Punch! Nice surge, dude. Bottle. Gone. Cat's Wards, core. Gone. That's how you pronounce his name. Thank you to the guy that tweeted at me. Cat's core? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I appreciate that as well. Yeah, because I that does not look like Cat's core no, to me, but, not. you know, you learn something new every day. All right, so now what do you think of this mid lane matchup? Now that Quap has lost a courier and lost her bottle. I mean, that's what I meant when you reach 10k, you have teammates help. Oh. That was the, the bottle did I? Right. Yeah. Well, Kakora, 10k, Trium Protector in my mind as far as... Boogie? Oh, Boogie's going to get punched right here. Leech C coming through. Puck in the yeah, tree. But these Eidolons, though. Okay. Even Nisha's not respecting it. Cat's core is like, I want to help you, but I don't have any points in living armor yet. Two points in guys. It got that courier kill, but couldn't save the Disruptor. So the Disruptor just died? By ganking the Enigma? Yeah, he was walking up. I mean, this ward that you mentioned that was placed on the uh, radiant, I mean, dire offlane cliff, I mean, sometimes it, it can be your blessing and your curse because you think you're able to get the jump on Enigma, but he already has like eight Eidolons up and running. Nisha activates the DD. No Misses carapace. the orb. Yeah, he's not going to get the kill. You hit that orb. Yeah. Things are being better in the mid lane, though, and. Unfortunately, things have gotten past the point of no return in the Radiant offlane as Sardar has now moved into the jungle, does not have a Quelling Blade, so he's pretty depressed while Draw Ranger is getting absolute freeform. Although not really CSing that much, but I imagine it's because the first wave and a half was spent too busy trying to kill heroes. Actually, now that I've looked at the mid lane a little bit more, I completely forgot the fact that Crop does have to Draw War at this game, so in terms of the damage arms race, it's fairly similar in the mid lane. True. Especially so. because Drowy is getting that free form right now. Yeah. Although DNZ is now feeling like it's necessary to protect his Quap in this mid lane, though. Yeah. Whenever I look at DNZ, I think of DMZ. Yeah, I know. He's a demilitar, denixilaritized zone. 
How's that? I don't even know what that means. What? Then what did you think DMZ stands for? The militarizer. Yes, I know, and he's okay. playing Nyx Assassin. All right. Yeah. Okay. Radiant, uh, Radiant safe lane, they've got PA also free farming, and toe to toe, PA probably comes out on top of Drow, maybe up until like 30 minutes or so. But that Enigma factor. Yeah, that's true. And Boogie. Boogie. Dagger. This Slowed. is the tower dive that we've been talking about. And the TP rainbow rotations. TPs. Yeah, the one gets canceled. Pulse. That gets a kill. Gets glimpsed back. All right, Blazemon's here as well. Exotic Deer is kind of stuck in the trees, but he's got Quelling Blade. He'll get out. And he's got Tree Protector. Patos coming in in the clutch on the slaughter. Cancelled out Witch Doctor's TP scroll. Okay. And that was almost certainly gotten at least one k return kill from Singularity because he has Maledict. He has two points in cask, but was not able to show up to that gank. And as a result, Enigma goes down for free. I mean, Blazemont did not have level 6 coming to the, the bottom lane for that gank, but I think even just with the blink and scream would at least, you know, maybe got the disruptor. Yeah, that not having a bottle is definitely being so a setback. That was actually two TPs and a Queen Three of Pain. Three TPs. One was coming into the shrine as well. Okay, well, damn. Yeah, so <laughs> that economic damage, you were telling me about it. Well, in terms of net worth, fairly uh, standard from both the carries. They're both doing well, but like you said, it seems like Exotic there should be able to influence the game a little bit earlier. Level 6 already, and we'll see if he is going to have a teleport scroll to look to make some counter T play. DNZ with that 6 cent smoke, or rather dust, excuse me. They will pick up a cat score kill. Good stuff there. Yeah, it seems like Trium Protector is actually the one playing aggressive. He's not really sitting around in any lane, which at this point, since you've created so much chaos on the map as Singularity, it may be in Train's best interest to go to the top lane now, which he is, because Dry Ranger has been left alone. People don't really know, like, okay, are they going to keep bullying this Enigma over and over again? Do we need to protect him? Do we need to protect our Quap? Because now this Puck has hit level 6 of Dream Coil and 2 points in Waning Rift, but looks like Skeeter is going to be the target of choice as Cat's Core does not actually have any aggressive wards, but... I'm not even sure whether they could kill the Drow. These two heroes are... Orb of Venom on the Tree Protector, and okay. Windlace, and Boots, I wouldn't sleep on it. I think they need level 6 on Slaughter before they could even think about that Drow kill. That may be true. Because, like, even if they get the kill... Well, she doesn't have any points in Gust, though. Well, it's more like they take some so long to get the kill that TP's going to come in, oh, yeah, and you're going to be in a bad spot. Here comes Smoke on the bottom lane. DNZ has a good stun available to him. He will miss it completely. And we are done. And now Drow Ranger has showed up to the party. Eidolons are up and running. Precision Aura has been activated. <laughs> SNG will uh, just leave. We'll go for the tower trade. I think this is a very smart move. Instead of defending the tower, if they get a tower trade, that is uh, quite good if you're up against the Drow lineup. Yeah, especially if four heroes are down here with the Drow Ranger. If it was just her, or maybe her plus the Enigma, you may be able to take that fight. But she's only just now hit level 7. Treads, Blightstone completed. It's not really worth your effort to try to take on a full fight, isn't Cat's it? Cat's core fighting. He's running. Uh, the Leech seed heal. Yeah, gonna go down here. Maybe the neutral will help him out. No. Nope. No. And what, Boogie? Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah. So they successfully take down that tier one tower bot, but there is a trade indeed as SNG is gonna finish off the top tier one of Dire. All right, exotic there. Gets the tower last hit as well. Oh, and Boogie actually takes Black Hole at 6, so what do you think about what Enigma's game plan should be now? Because with a Drow lineup, and you push towers early, oftentimes you're like, okay, well, I mean, we're not going to team fight, really. What am I going to use Black Hole for? But he takes it at 6. I think Black Hole is actually a fine spell to take at 6, just like getting a kill. It's a long cooldown, but like I say, you don't expect a team fight too early anyways. And it's a hero against a hero like Puck, where he uses his phase, and then you try to get out of place, right? You could just, like, Black Hole on top of the phase. And then he's boned. All right. And Puck is still a ways away from a Blink Dagger. Has actually opted to go for the Veil first item. All right. Black Hole right here. Uh, actually, that's not a bad idea if he had the mana for oh. it. And he silenced Nisha. I see it. I see what you were talking about. Top lane here. Kill being set up on DNZ. Does he have the spike? He does. But uh, he dead. And the TP rotation is coming in too late. Blazemon has a Blink but does not have Sonic Wave. So... He can only go for a blind scream, and he's not even going to try for it. 
Right. Disruptor gets to move away, Turnaround. but here it comes on the back line here. Puck gets the one kill, looking for the second. Defensive Frost Arrow coming out here from the Drow Ranger, pushing people back. They want the Quap instead. Blazemon oh. goes to the top. Is Puck still on the chase? Nisha gets the one kill. Orbs forward, sees Skitters. There is a Raining Rift. There's a couple more right clicks here. Still moving forward. Nisha sees a Queen of Pain on top there as well. Nice Gust pushing them back. Mana Burn gets 39 out of it. The Spike will push them back as well, but good Puck play overall. Picks up quite a bit of kills, and now firmly ahead is uh, Singularity, up 2k. Yeah, thankfully Drow Ranger does survive for Penta, and that may be influencing what she's planning on going for. This Drow is actually going for a drum Drums. first item, yeah. Okay. So, like, for some reason, no one seems to be going Dragonlance first these days, or even, like, Aquila. Oh, well, I mean, she got the Aquila, but, like, sometimes you won't even see the Aquila. They'll just be going for, like, these kind of unconventional survivability items because normally I mean like Dragonlance tanks you up and sure. sometimes a Yasha like the move speed is pretty useful also but I've been seeing all sorts of unconventional pickups by draw rangers just to adapt to the enemy draft yeah I mean Dragonlance and Hurricane Pike the one that follows after is so good against heroes like PA right they blink in you push them back mm -hmm. or having a defensive tool. Obviously he's maybe thinking to play a little bit more team oriented you talked about the Enigma taking Black Ola 6 Drum seeing up on, on the Drow Ranger, maybe looking to group up and get some early action going. Yeah, as a five man group, Hurricane Pike plus Dragonlance may not be that useful because the other advantage is because it gives you that bonus attack range, you can siege towers from a safer distance. But that's really not an issue even in a five man situation until you're going for high ground. So I can, I'm, I'm curious to see how this drum works out. Yep. I mean, Precision Aura active plus active drum charge on Eidolons is probably a ton of damage on anything. And that 50% mana regen, I mean, you're going to be uh, out of mana as his Raw Ranger pretty frequently, so. And Mid lane, now. Queen of Pain going to get popped down here by a good Static Storm usage. And they didn't even need to use Dream Coil for that, just the Veil damage plus that Kinetic Field Static Storm yep. and Glimpse. Nisha very close to that Blink Dagger. Once they get the tower, they will get it. And I think Penta is looking to take this fight here. Boogie does not have Blink available, so the surprise Black Hole. Should not be able to get him. There's a big focus here. They really don't want to have to lose this mid tower. Four heroes are here, while Singularity weren't even really trying that hard to take it. Only the Puck and uh, the Trium Protector were in the vicinity, and now they're just moving around in the dire jungle. But wait, there's more DNZ in position. I think he's trying to. Oh, spike it! Uh. Oh. Nisha with the game sense, even going for some farm. Okay, now... I mean, it wasn't game sense, it was just farm. Oh! oh! What did you say? I'm sorry? What was that? That was just good reaction, right? Nah, it's like... Really bad puck players have that uh, face shift and autocast. No Drow Ranger. Sorry. Thought she was fine. That was an old meme. Wait, it's not fine. He's gonna go down here as we have DNZ. Going on Cat's Core, Maledic on top as well. Yeah, overgrowth. Okay, he's gonna be fine. You used to be able to have uh, auto cast on face shift. And it would dodge spells? Yeah, auto dodge spells. Wow. Yeah. My skill cap. But uh, they took that away. Well, I would hope so. Mid tier 1 getting sieged by Radiant. There's really no one interested in contesting it. Except Enigma, because PA does not actually feel confident enough in finishing it off. So, never mind. And now Mech completed on the Enigma. Blazemon seems to be... Uh, actually, the entire Penta team seems to be some, some Weibu up in his... Ohio, behind uh, Boogie. Oh, yeah. A little bit of hello. Oh, yeah, after A little Blazemon. bit of good night, you know? Oh, Nisha playing with fire. I don't know what Epos mean. That seems like some it's a sponsor. sellout stuff. It is sellout stuff. Though I believe they're also sponsoring this. So shout out to Epos. There you go. <laughs> I'm the bad cop, that's why I'm doing right, this. Right, 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 yeah. right. Smoke up on Penta. They don't really have the best vision, and if it gets Ooh, broken cat's by a Cat's core. core... He's gonna get dusted, right? That's fine, he he knows. All right. okay, he's on the run! Through the trees? Stop, 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 stop. Yo, they nerfed this guy's movement speed, they right? They did. Oh my god, dusted another dust! Again. What do you say, that, what do you call that? Economic damage. Economic damage. Two dust, the cooldown damage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's the first I've heard on that one. 
Unfortunately, right. there's no one else in Viz. It's just Tram Protector, but... Slardar picks up his bling. Nisha's had his bling for a while now, and looks like we're going to see a little bit of a tower push on the bottom side. That, that glyph, perhaps a little bit premature by the Radiant side, but still. The tower was going to go down regardless. There's yep. no way you can really Yo, stand though. up against Singularity in the boss pit. Now that's a, that's a really smart rotation. We'll take a little bit of time here as uh, PA doesn't really have the best damage, but... Oh, it's scanned. Scanned by Dire. They're okay. all power ranging on yep, to the shrine. Do all Disruptor in position to glimpse some kids back. Boogie's got Nisha that. with the game oh, sense. Oh, glimpse went back. No Enigma there. Skaters. Oh, that's a three-man crush. Where's the overgrowth? Boom. He give him the growth. There's now the we'll overgrowth. That shrine's down, by the way. And, uh, well, they are all dead. Jab's going to be the last man standing. Nisha looking for any remainders. Maybe he's trying to be able to snipe out a courier. But this Radiant Ward placed on the shrine, they definitely were prepared for that Roche attempt. It wasn't just like, uh, oh, we can't defend our tower. Let's just go take Roche. Yep. It was pre-mediated, and they were definitely prepared. Really clean initiation by the puck. It basically split the fight in half as Queen of Pain kind of was on the south side, and Sardar was able to crush the three heroes underneath their shrine on the high ground. And... Tree Protector just came in, finished off the last two with an overgrowth. Silver Lining for Penta did get the tier two on the bottom. Quite a bit of damage yeah. on the bottom tier three as Thanks well. Like that Drow Aura. Drow Aura, I believe there were six Eidolons smacking at the building. You know, about 60% HP remainder on, on that tower. But so. you do have a Tree Protector on your side. That's so true. So really doesn't matter. They got a tier two. That's really what happened. Yeah. And I do believe Exotic Deer is about to uh, hit his peak, the first peak. The Desolator online. I'm gonna see that first interaction of the uh, the Drow versus PA matchup, and this is this is the stage of the game where you wish a Drow Ranger has a Curr King Pike and not building towards Hood. Yeah, and plus, what is the? <laughs> I don't know what. Talk everyone, me through this Hood build. Everyone loves it these days. Like, You're the analyst on this cast. So. Like this, so there's minus armor from the Slardar. There's yep. minus armor from the PA who has now completed a Desolator. Yep. The magic damage here is not negligible. It's a veil on Puck. Okay. But it's not nearly as much as the minus armor initiation. Oh, DNC. Nix, uh, Nisha's too good. Yeah, too fast. Too furious. Yeah, right. So I don't know what the meme is with the hood first. Like it, <laughs> it's it's a it's a comfortable item to have as a drow ranger. It's it a comfortable you, item on a drow ranger. Eight HP regen per second is pretty pretty satisfying because if you don't you know what build gives you steel, HP regen and Hurricane Pike because it has a ring of health in it. I don't think it's quite as. All much. right, Blink Crush. That's gonna find them one exotic. They're going in DNZ. We'll make them work for it. Okay, Sonic Wave gonna be a big one if they, he wants to use it, but no, Coil's gonna be there. Storm on top. That's gonna be two kill. That Overgrowth's gonna come through Nisha now finding more, but no Coil. We'll blink forward waning with. My god, the damage is real. We'll have a little bit of composure and does not chase into the base. Alright, so now how are you feeling about this level six black hole from Bowie? Not that it's just one skill point. I, I mean, know. It, it didn't matter whether he got it or not, right? Like Right, but like it, it's kind of indicative of how they have been playing. Because, like, you don't take Black Hole at 6 unless you think you can use Black Hole at yeah, 6. Yeah, I think they they were looking for opportunities to use that Black Hole, but they couldn't find them. Remember, like, the Roshan fight? Like, right. having Black Hole there was great, but he got glimpsed. So, I, I can't follow the skill build too much. Um, last Tier 1 tower is claimed bot. And Cat's Core is on the run. But, I mean, he's perfectly okay tanking these ganks. Because Puck and PA are just getting larger and larger. I mean, he is doing some cooldown damage and, and right, exactly. economic damage whenever he's tanking them gank, so it's it's fine. And now Nisha has a Yule's completed on this Puck, so life just got even harder for this Drow Ranger to be able to evade things. I mean, he's got hoods, so it's fine. Oh yeah, that, that uh, Yule's landing damage, totally forgot about that. Yeah. Scan right. lands. They know where... Singularity is. They know vaguely where Singularity is. Moogie's got the, the the Greaves as well, so can Black Hole through the uh, the waning riff. And Penta are camping with their own smoke, but that this is, seems kind of optimistic because the enemy team is right next to your tier two. PA yep. is not going to be pushing this all by herself unless if her team is behind her. Look at Cat's course position. This is how you break a smoke. And 
Nyx Assassin's gonna lead it. Okay, smoke broken. Where is the detection? Sensual gets dropped. They know they Whoa. blow him up. Where did he go? Oh, Coil three, on Coil. four! Overgrowth on top of that as well. The black hole that will get two. It gets canceled immediately on the back line. Here comes the exotic dare slaying kits. Blazemon did use his overgrowth to secure one kill. Exotic dare will get a little bit more. Blazemon blinks away, but they are still following him up. They have glimpse in a couple of seconds. They got the vision on top as well. Meanwhile, the rest of the team in a little bit of trouble. Looks like exotic dare Aegis did get used up, but damn. They got the Nyx Assassin fast. I think they even committed perhaps a little bit too much for that, but... They did, but thankfully Nisha came in in the clutch with an amazing Dream Coil follow-up, and I believe the Black Hole ended up getting cancelled by a cask, and the synergy... Oh wait, no, it couldn't have been a cask. Probably like just like a glimpse or Yeah, or something. I, I guess it yeah. must have been a glimpse, but whatever the case, like I also thought I was like, okay, you're going way too hard on this Nyx Assassin. But they finished him off and proceeded to win the rest of the team fight because Drow Ranger has no means of sieging safely from a distance. You buy a hood that's basically asking to get into the fight because you're like, okay, well, I have increased spell resistance. I'm able to block like 300 spell damage. I don't need positioning. I just need tanking. But it's not nearly enough against all the physical damage that Singularity have on this team. Oh, yeah, and then there's also a medallion on Tree and Protector. So there's even more minus armor. Look, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to say Hood Draw Ranger is... There's a time and place, but this is really not it. <laughs> tier 2 mid claimed. One last tier 2 tower remaining. And for what it's worth, Penta have reasonably strong high ground defense. But the thing is that you can't really... If you're hemmed in your base as a Draw Ranger, you fall off much faster than other heroes. Because, like, Draw Ranger needs to hit, like, that level level 3 in marksmanship to start being a solid one position especially with the pipe first build so pipe first let's uh, let's give it a chance you know i gave it a chance we, yesterday we haven't we haven't it won right it won so but he was against a venomancer Right, it makes sense there then. Yes, Pipe. a time and a place, yeah. as a wise man once told me. Well, Exotic Dare is going to be going for actual good items. Uh, BKB is coming up next, and that will make him pretty much immortal. Uh, Black Hole will control him, but and of course Sonic Wave does go through as well. But Cat's Core, spooking on yeah, Blazemon. They got the He's roots. got Root and Overgrowth. Root. He's got Haste through him. Punch, Overgrowth. Link Stun, Link Stun. Nope, you just got the Stack Ooh. Storm. Yep, got him. Very well staggered out. So you know what? I was hating on the tree a little bit early on. Uh, you know, saying that it's really not that good of a hero because of all the nerf. But the way that Cat Score has been playing it, it looks like a superb pick. It's broken three or four smokes now. Won them a couple of fights. Gotten a couple hero kills. Remember he sniped the, the bottle in the mid lane as well. Uh -huh. I'm thoroughly impressed. The uh, man is playing it like a Ricky pretty much. Yeah. And well, a Ricky that punches super hard exactly. and has team fight control. So. Exactly. And it's been working out very well. Now, it's difficult to say, like, if it's with this specific team. But, I, I, you know, then again, like, I wouldn't say that this lineup is, you know, that synergistic with the Train Protector. Because it's not like... Well, yes, it, it does have the fact that, like, he, he gets to scout people out and his heroes could join that oh, They're part. very mobile. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think true. mobility couples very well with Train. Yeah, because, like, whenever you spotted out that Drow Ranger, his allies were, like, you know, probably, like, 3,600 units away. But Sardar's got Sprint Blink. The Disruptor has super long range on Glimpse, and obviously Puck is highly mobile, which... It's all stuff that Train Protector loves to be able to combine with, especially since he didn't go for a Blink Dagger on this Train Protector. 3,600 units, are we talking about kilometers? I'm talking about Dota freedom units. units. I'm talking what are Dota I'm talking, units? I'm talking like three Blink Daggers away. Pixel units? Three Blink Daggers away. Is that the measurement? <laughs> That's what I go by. <laughs> How many Blink Dagger are you away from me right now? I'm, I'm saying like uh, two experience ranges away. Okay. Skitters is one Blink Dagger away from Nisha right now. <laughs> and PA has a 10 second BKB so she can be zero Blink Daggers away from any given target and not care at all. The only thing you need to be concerned about is Black Hole but Boogie does not have that BKB. Actually went for Blink Dagger after the Greaves. Well, how did you know that PA have a 10 second BKB? We're not under that uh the moon duck. Oh, true. All this stuff. That's true. We gotta manually check. I didn't uh that that courier thing. Oh wait, Valve added it though. So I mean like oh in the Roshan. Oh wait, Valve added that though. So you know. You mean stolen? I don't know what you're talking about. 
There's honor amongst thieves. Shout out to uh, Pimp Buckle and whoever he's, Buckle. whoever he's working with. Uh, I know Buka. someone else too, I don't know. It's Buka. Okay. I'll take your word for it. You should. Innovate Dota spectating. And then Valve <laughs> does what China does. Take stuff and give it to all of us. Which is, you know, I ain't complaining. No, I'm definitely not complaining. Just a little bit. Cat's core still on his way to that solar crest. So what? What? I haven't really been seeing too much solar crest recently. What are What are your thoughts on those nerfs to make it the still a good item? Change? Still a good item. I agree. Yep. But for some reason, I don't see it nearly as much. Uh, one of the reason, perhaps, is the fact that Heaven's Halberd got oh uh, yeah popular as an item, got buffed as an item. So true. some some of that gold went towards building that. There, sort of similar cost does give you evasion and survivability as well. Uh, to that note, I think Heaven's Halberd is still an under purchase item. I think it's very good. Uh, how do you feel about Solar Crest uh, specifically on a Drow Ranger? It is armor. Were we not talking about the virtues of armor? I mean, look, I know we're we're joking about Skitter's build, but it seems like this is not the traditional Drow <laughs> It seems like it. it is not the traditional way of playing Drow Ranger. If you play of a utility core, utility hero, it, that, that might be onto something, you know? I agree with that but i don't think you can play her in a one position then if you're able to get right. with like a drought three mid, or like a three yeah, yeah. Or some sort of like tri lane situation i mean quap is one of those heroes i can carry uh, if she gets to 25. true but this but is not, not oh. 25. oh here we go initiation on to well boogie boogie's got himself the griefs he'll pop it right now a lot of damage being exchanged here and actually singularity perhaps a little bit too deep aegis oh. triggered up what is that death ward it's like a tank are Sonic they going to black hole that? Uh, no black hole used just Gem dropped. Yet. And now DNZ. There's a black hole just onto one. But it gets cancelled immediately. Wait, did he cancel himself? I'm not too sure what happened there. Exotic. They're going to be fine. Everyone retreats. They, lo they lost the Slaughter and the Aegis for nothing. So. And a gem. Yeah. So, and a 10 second BKB. So, that's, I, I was really over eager initiation in my opinion. I mean, yeah. they, have, they had two shrines up. They didn't even have to activate their mid-shrine, which is where the Puck initially uh, started s initiating the fight, and they it just started migrating downwards. They were really hoping that they were able to finish off that Enigma, but the Dream Coil range wasn't really, like it was centered on Enigma as opposed to putting Enigma on the edge of the Dream Coil, and so he was able to walk out, and the Kinetic Field Static Storm did not catch him. Yeah, that that's the problem. They didn't really combine it, or timed it rather properly. If they get the Static Storm on top, uh, with the Kinetic Field setting in, then they get that kill, and you know, your PA doesn't get black hole, but because they didn't time the things uh, so properly, things happen. A lot happened. more heroes had to yeah. commit. Slaughter had to jump in. Well, Slaughter started the fight, so he, he was yeah. in already. But I thought Puck started the fight. I think they both did. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, either way, it wasn't really a convenient place for Trina Protector to get an overgrowth, and then Queen of Pain had nothing to be afraid of. She just jumped onto the Disruptor, pretty much just Sonic waved the supports on Singularity and got a gem out of the exchange. Well, I think the other bigger thing of discussion for me is whether they needed to make that jump, right? You can technically slow siege the tier 3. I mean, PA is not exactly the best tower seizure, and neither is Puck. So I do understand kind of the importance of making that jump. At the same time, they kind of could just hit the building a little bit. You got a Desol on the PA. It's, yeah. not, it's not the worst. Exactly. And plus, you have to keep in mind you're against a pipe Drow Ranger. And the initiating heroes that you have of the Puck A... Hey, it made a difference that I'm fight. sure the solo crest did as well. Like I'm, no joke. Yeah, I, I know. I'm sure. But and so you know, whenever you see these kinds of hyper defensive items on a draw ranger, it's not really in your best interest to immediately take the fight. Only if you start seeing a opening or some sort of counter initiation play do I think that you should kind of make those plays in a high ground siege situation. Ooh, nice spike here by DNZ. Okay, real talk for a second. If you're getting a defensive item for the Drow Ranger this game, mm -hmm. is Solo Crest better than Heaven's Albert against the PA? Um, does let you? Yes, because Halberd doesn't give you any armor, and so as as amusing as a disarm would be, and the other thing is PA is a melee hero, so the disarm is not quite as value against her. Why not? It doesn't last as long. I mean, she she ain't hitting your team. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I, it's not a bad item, and plus the other thing is also Drow Ranger is an agility hero as opposed to a strength hero, so even some of the stats of Halber aren't that beneficial. Yes, she does appreciate being tanked up, but I think Solar Quest overall 
the armor against a desolator, an enemy medallion, and the corrosive haze are more valuable than the disarm would be. Okay. I hear you. That, that makes a lot of sense. But I definitely think that Radiant should pick up a Halberd. On probably Slaughter is ideal. Um, I mean, who did he actually need to Halberd? Nobody's stealing physical damage. I mean, Draw Ranger is nothing to, like, scoff at. and even He's got 200. Alright, fine. Then how about the fact that she's giving 53 bonus damage to the Queen of Pain? Maybe disarm the Queen of Pain. Alright. She's doing 150. <laughs> no. 160. Yeah, 170. One, it's yeah. like... Listen, you tell me how they lost that fight then. <laughs> Someone had to be doing damage. Sonic yep, Wave. Sonic Wave on the bottom side here. Cat score. Gonna get picked off here as well. He's making of... space though. I mean... Well, all right, let's look at the space that he's giving to the PA, who is hitting a, a lift up tower. Puck is also going to join in. That tower is down to a quarter HP, and you don't have a treant on that team. All right, unhealable damage. <coughs> so actual like damage, damage, not economic or emotional or cooldown damage. Tower damage. Tower damage. I've never heard of such a thing. <coughs> Gonna say, uh, Singularity look really crisp, crisp and clean up to this point, but. High ground seems to be a different story for them as they are struggling a little bit. DNZ sees the whole team coming, but still the stun will come through. Nice oh, two-man stun mix. though. That is going to help out the Queen of Pain a little bit here. Skitters trying to right-click away, hits absolutely like a kitten, but we'll get the kill regardless. Here comes the PA though, showing some real damage. Zero crit so far. There's a bash and Skitters <laughs> evading a couple of the hits. And now the Black Hole will come in on the back line, gets Yules up immediately exotic there. There's a one crit. They're really going hard on the Skitter. The man has a hood, Jeez. will survive. Blazemon now getting Orb 2 and will go down. DNZ, without just two carries, will probably think about running away. There is a long glimpse back. Jabs, oh my god, that's a real crit. We'll get the kill. Orbing forward, Nisha finds himself DNZ. DNZ, oh, oh. what a phase. Gets the kill. God, like, that is the man that has not been uh, playing poorly at all. No, consistently strong, and especially with that follow-up initiation on the Slardar. Basically just toying with the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain is a hero that does not need to be engaged in a fight for that long, so it's a testament to a puck player to be able to keep you around between Waning Rift and Yules and Dream Coil and forcing out three buybacks as a Tier 3 tower does go down. Nyx Assassin looking for something. Okay, Vendetta. Slow things down. All right, tier threes are all down. So regardless, they will start to get some shrines after this. But range racks now being sieged. No puck now going up top. top. Yeah, just like basically playing with them. Any attention they're diverting to the puck. I mean, you've got you got Lincolns, you've got Yules, you've got Phase Shift. What do you really need to be concerned about if a black hole is down? Yeah, black hole is is really the only concern. But uh. And maybe like a good time carapace, but if you see Nyx on the map, then you don't even need to be concerned about that either. Alright, he's got Dagon queued up. Man after my own heart. He's not level 25 yet, so I'm surprised he's going for the Dagon now. Yeah, he's but gotta start it up, you know? Yeah, right. It's like your, your kid's going to college. That's true, it's a trust fund. It's really nothing like a trust fund, but... You trust that you're going to hit level 25. True. That's what trust fund means. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the uh, the trust fund for the, for Blazemon, very far away from twenty five. Vera. He still needs to get that orchid that he's been struggling to complete for quite a while, and at this point, it's almost even difficult to say how useful it'll be against the puck. Uh, same thing with the bloodthorn, which will inevitably come afterwards to be able to get some true strike on the phantom assassin. All these items are great, but they may be coming a little bit too late, and one can only wonder if that's maybe because they don't have any tower gold. They've only taken two towers the entire game. DNZ. Oh, where do you go? Okay. <laughs> okay, indeed. Wow, blinking exotic in. deer feeling himself has yep. his uh, Nisha. All right, everyone's in there. We've seen this one before, but uh, all right, Storm gets nothing. Everyone backs off. Boogie's BKB. That. I believe it's a 10 second one. Yeah, I wouldn't to, know though because... That's true. He had to get out of the, the kinetic field static storm and Nisha's still just toying with the dire team right now. Lincoln's is popped, he still doesn't care. He knows there's too much pressure on the mid lane. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. He takes down a tier 3 all by himself. Okay. 
Skeeter looking for a gust, but what matters, he doesn't have any damage. All right, Enigma's gonna take a ton of that damage. Wolg looking to go where's down. Where's the crits? Yeah, where is the crits? I don't know, but All he right. gets the kill anyway. Queen of Pain on the back line, trying to take down a couple of heroes. Unfortunately, unable to take down anything. Meanwhile, Nisha now joins the fight. Eidolons is pushing him way exotic there. Give me some numbers, red numbers. This is the unluckiest PA I've ever seen. Oh, he did get the one-shot kill. That's so. true. But you should be getting like three of those, four of those per game. Nisha, my god. This he's man playing. is acting oh, like he has the Drown Ranger on his team with the damage that he's dealing. Wait. He's playing. He's got the Dagon. Face! Oh! And it doesn't matter. A rare misplay. Oh, there's that crit. Queen of Pain goes down. And Nisha working hard. There's the Dagon. Dagon. DNZ will we'll be uh, forced out to GG. And they'll kill the Quap one more time. Nisha Beyond God, like, like I mentioned earlier, if a man could pop off on a Dragon Knight, he could also pop off on the Fairy Dragon, because they're both Dragon heroes. <laughs> Next up, we're going to see DN's, or Nisha playing the Jakiro for the oh, Dragon. Oh man, now that, <laughs> the twin had a Dragon pop off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, okay, so that is probably the best mid lane performance I've seen throughout the EU qualifiers. I mean, Nisha definitely had a very solid team behind him, helping him out, but 11-0-7 against a Queen of Pain is not an easy feat. It's, uh, that's, oh, okay, a Queen of Pain with a Drow Ranger aura as well. So I can only wonder that if you had pushed an advantage earlier on as Penta with more traditional Drow Ranger items, then your whole team would have had more gold, like Jabs. Absolutely nothing on the Wish Doctor. He didn't even finish off Arcane Boots. DNZ, how often do you see a Nyx Assassin this poor in a game that goes this long? Got a staff of wizardry, bro. I don't know what you mean. Oh yeah, that's true. That was one of the it's a game changing item. Ten last hits, two denies. Actually for me the bigger thing is the Enigma, right? We talked about it as the last pick. Um very anemic. Did it do anything? He didn't have an opportunity to do anything, and that's part of the draft issue, really. Right, so picking up other offlaners, in my opinion, could have been perhaps a better choice. Yeah, I think they may have been, like, it, it was like a, it was a Drow Ranger lineup in air quotes, because, like, sure, Enigma Drow Ranger is a very entertaining combination, but they didn't run it like a traditional Enigma Drow Ranger lineup, and ultimately I think that cost them, but I am going to give more credit in my opinion, to Team Singularity for just extremely clean play. Team Singularity improves to 4-1, and one, so I believe that is number one in the groups, although not a lot of these have been updated. Penta Esports, or Penta Sports, excuse me, is dropped down to 2-3, and three, and they are, I don't want to say facing elimination, but close to it, close to it. We're going to take a short break, guys. Game 2, or rather the next. Now Sports versus Open Qualifier number 1, which is the Lotus Stack, will be coming up next. All right, thank you for that. We'll go to a break.